Hello, hello, starseeds. Welcome back to another video on starseeds and solar fractals. I wanted to have a little bit of a discussion about the dimensions of consciousness. What I often see is an almost like a forced categorization of each dimensional experience. There's almost like this belief that you can only have one but not the other. Or that when you're experiencing one level of consciousness, you're not experiencing the rest. And those are very common misconceptions. I don't really uh, call out anyone on having these misconceptions because we have only had such a limited amount of information in any given time of living on this planet. There's really no judging those that kind of uh, maybe work based on uh, older information because there might be useful things in there but I want to kind of bring in my understanding of the dimensions and a lot of this is just based on my own exploration. Of course I have studied these things and come to my own conclusions about them but the main sort of I guess framework where I come from is just my own experience as a starseed, you know, and as a being who will and has uh, embodied different levels of consciousness and different uh, dimensional experiences, as well as is constantly working on embodying their true multi-dimensional self. And again, the multi-dimensional self is a spectrum of different levels of consciousness, of different dimensional experiences. I often see like this very almost like a blanket statement that we are living in a 3D reality and then that being equated to certain things that don't necessarily have to be a 3D experience. They're simply a part of the human experience as we're speaking and being a human does not necessarily have to be thought of as a third dimensional experience. Actually being a human is more closer to 4 to 5D experience and it is the 3D experience that has to do with the old earth matrix and the consciousness where our planet has been in the past, where we have already been moving out of. And this is something that, you know, I do see causing a little bit of, um, I guess, upheaval in the world because not only is this a uh, part of a consciousness that some groups are still kind of trying to keep alive by putting out more of the trash into the universe, into this planet. But then there is also part of those who believe that that having a shitty experience is necessary for a life in general. And I guess one could go into a philosophical uh, discussion about, you know, the cycle of life and death and whatnot, but um, personally I believe that, that having this much suffering is completely unnecessary. Um, I believe that for example, when it comes to things like war, our species should have evolved out of that like a long time ago. And it is because of this lower dimensional construct, so things like second dimension, third dimension, those levels of consciousness that that are, you know, trying to coexist with, with us that are trying to hold a, sort of a container for those type of forces. And again, even with the, with the third dimension, it is not just all like shit. Like, of course, there are things such as, you know, instincts. And um, for example, when we think about stress, it isn't always a negative thing. Of course, too much is. But there is also, you know, things like positive stress. And there are also things like positive life events that can cause stress. So it's important to not be in such a black and white thinking with this either, because that can also just cause more problem. It can lower our consciousness if we think in black and white, if we have the sort of limited perspective on these things. People believe that they cannot embody their multidimensional self simply because of the fact that they happen to have a body in the first place and because they equate the third dimensional experience with having a body and like it's that simple to them. 
but the truth of the matter is humans are a fourth to fifth dimensional beings. We were meant to be even more than that. And we are more than that. We are more than fifth dimensional. We experience these dimensions of consciousness all the time, but not all of us have the uh, sort of spiritual energetic capacity to reach higher levels than that. And that's what I want to help people train for. My main thing with this uh, conversation today is to help you open your damn mind. <laughs> Just to see another way of interpretation and another way of perceiving this topic. Because the main issue that is keeping us stuck, really, is this idea that we are going into the fifth dimension when the fifth dimension is already there, it's already accessible to so many of us. It's this idea that it will just be like this, that there, uh, that some level of consciousness will just like completely vanish. Well, maybe it will one day. I'm not saying that it cannot, right? But as of right now, for those that want the 5D Earth, it is there for you. There is another uh, video that I have filmed. It was about just my own experiences, my own sensations about the new Earth and what that was like. That goes a little bit more in depth on the realms of the new Earth. And I do believe that one of these realms is a lower dimensional for uh, maybe fourth dimensional, you know, energetic. And because, yes, the Earth is a very diverse planet, therefore there is diversity to how much energy and how much higher dimensional consciousness each of us can uh, receive and hold, how much capacity do we really have. And that is what gives space for these different realms to be in. And the, the realms themselves, now this is something that I'm not too clear on if this has to do more with space, like physical space, or if this has to do with just, okay, this is a plane of consciousness and, well, I think that's mostly what it is. There might also be different uh, spatial situations where there's just more spatial you know, sort of availability for a certain uh, spiritual consciousness. And I know that for myself, I have been doing crystal planting, so I've been uh, assisting southern Finland get its shit together <laughs> to get a little bit more of that higher uh, multidimensional consciousness in and for the space to go through its own ascension process and I will link a video this is uh, this video is made by Nico from Son of Selene so I'm just gonna let you all in on his work and how he goes about doing uh, crystal planting because he's the guy I learned from and he's the guy I learned from a lot of stuff so go and support him. When it comes to understanding the higher dimensional consciousness, a lot of actually I've learned from doing my gate work in the, in, at my gateways and then there is also a lot to do with just my exploration with my multidimensional consciousness and my oversoul and stuff like that with different types of spirit work and you know things like that what it really means to have say closer to say fifth to six dimensional consciousness and mind you these can also change sometimes we kind of we deal with different life situations and there uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean that those uh, levels of consciousness disappear completely from your experience because they're uh, once you have unlocked it once you know what it feels like and therefore you know you can reach that again uh, kind of like let, let's make this a little bit more human uh, even though this doesn't really have much to do with the human experience always but let's just say you have a really good uh, money month, you sell a lot of things and then and, and then you just have a lot more than you had before. Now you know what that feels like. Kind of, you know, the so, to some extent you know the energetic blueprint of that situation. And therefore you know how to uh, sort of evoke that or invoke that or bring it more into your life. And with something like multidimensional uh, embodiment, the thing with 
bringing more of that divine consciousness in is that often uh, there will be different, uh, let's just say tests, that's the best word I can think of, but there will be different sort of, well a rite of passage is kind of like what I'm thinking of, but there will be different things that we're going to be doing and sometimes we are in more of a shedding season where we're gonna have to let go of a lot more in order to reach those higher consciousness points. Um, sometimes it's more about adding things, more about uh, including new things. And there are different lessons that go with these things and sometimes the lessons might uh, feel a little bit unrelated to what you're actually going through or what you're actually um, dealing with in your spiritual practice and therefore it can be a bit um, confusing sometimes as to how your consciousness evolves and what makes it evolve and and there have sometimes been like these really bizarre things that have happened and I wanted to kind of talk about the clearing process a little bit and purification in this because clearing and purification is a big part of raising your consciousness and the reason why it is is because we go through like a lot of shit as humans <laughs> well we have been going through that's how we have learned this part which is not going to be so when you raise your consciousness the lessons are going to come through different ways and a lesson is not a negative thing it's purely neutral thing and that's also something that we have to work through we have to do so much deconditioning in order to understand that we have put labels onto these different words and we have almost given them a vibrational blueprint uh, and that is coming from us, it's not the word itself that is doing that. And therefore we have to decondition and kind of peel back the layers of different connotations and associations that we have put onto different things. And as soon as we start to do that process, we're able to see, uh, it's almost like we're wiping the windows clean, if that makes sense. For that reason, the process of deconditioning, the process of clearing, the process of purification, is very important. It almost seems like sometimes we don't really have a full picture of even healing because this deconditioning and this purification and this clearing is so important to that process as well and that's something that I wish that my prior self uh, would have known, you know, a few years ago, even before that, that, you know, Deconditioning does not happen by bringing yourself into another way of conditioning yourself and just making more associations to different things, you know, that, that, that that's not the way it works. The, the way it works is purifying all conditioning, purifying all conditions, purifying all of those associations and, you know, labels in this existence. We do like to label things, and I'm not saying that uh, they are always a distortion or that they would always be something that would hurt us. Of course not, because we have our human experience. That's where, where we need those labels, and that's where they can be very helpful. But for when it comes to spiritual truth and a spiritual expansion, spiritual experience, when it comes to understanding that on a deeper level we do in fact have to let go of a lot of those labels and we're gonna have to just go with the flow, right? Going with the flow to, you know, this stream of infinite consciousness and not just trying to make sense or label or um, put more and more stickers on it or try to understand everything all at once, it has to be felt, it has to be integrated and experienced. And that's another thing where the integration process is just as important, okay? And I know that for myself, <laughs> I also have had those moments where this has been actually the hardest part. Like the clearing is not that hard, um, but a challenge that we often get is, is something coming up, just to be clear, I actually just had that yesterday. Around the evening, uh, something came to my mind, and then I was just like, oh my god, why am I feeling so uncomfortable? And then I just felt like a very warm embrace, just coming like, nothing's wrong. <laughs> and then, turned out, I just needed to clear that. 
<laughs> just needed to freaking clear that and move on and just let myself grow into a new way of being which is very beautiful when that happens we do have to learn new ways and integrate yes integrate new ways of being and integrate new ways of the divine love for us to be present it's becoming whole after the the sort of clearing process because there's always something that we learn from for example healing crises and different situations like this so whatever we're kind of going through in that process whatever our process is we need to integrate and we need to bring in those elements we need to become whole again also a way to think about this is for example soul retrieval so when we retrieve different fragments of our soul, different fractals that were once a part of us um, that maybe a traumatic event may have uh, sort of dissolved uh, that is another way to look at it but I think about um, the integration process well of course that also has to happen in a soul retrieval uh, but I also think about it in a way where uh, the uh, soul retrieval can be a little bit um, more deeper, it can go through lifetime and whereas integration, integration can happen in more than just the sort of healing crisis of a situation or soul fragmentation the integration can also happen in these situations where we are learning through positive positive polarity uh, again these are um, the sort of very loaded words for some people but the way i understand polarizing positive is that we co go through these these challenges that are not necessarily traumatic or painful but they are situations where we are expanding and growing and that is where integration happens as well because we're integrating again a new way of being we're integrating a way of life that is going to flourish and just expand and blossom more rather than uh, integrating a healing situation or integrating something that was once lost so there's a different dynamic there and i think it's important that we remember that throughout our journeys because um Whenever you see somebody who's, uh, who's very positive and who's very balanced and peaceful and who's uh, sort of emanating that aura, that aura of a very uh, uplifting energy and very, even very healing energy, very beautiful energy, when you come across someone like that, someone who's speaking... Um, about things in a very um, yeah positive and uplifting way and they're not necessarily coming at things from this place of like just wanting to make everything about shadow work or wanting to make everything about digging into your pain and just dwelling in their suffering right and i'm not judging that okay you are where you are it's okay remember that we are all in different parts of our journey and trust me, I've been in that state. And that's, I think, another thing that, yeah, like a lot of people might forget that my state of spiritual consciousness was not like this all the time. You know, I went through a lot of things. And that does not mean that I'm gonna have to stay where I was. And that does not mean that other beings around me should have so much of a say in uh, what I'm offering, right? Because I do need to be timely with myself. And I do feel like a lot of that does get also, you know, projected onto us, those of us who are offering things. When we talk about higher self, we're not talking about a hierarchy. And when we talk about higher consciousness, higher multidimensional consciousness, we are not talking about something that is uh, like a higher as in hierarchy that's a, that's kind of the basic 
um, misconception that a lot of people also have. They think that if there is a higher self or is the, if there is a multidimensional self or if there is higher consciousness, um, if there is a higher vibration even, that that is somehow religious or that is somehow indicative of uh, a hierarchy in a way. And to me that's just not the way I understand it because again we can uh, embody more of these levels of consciousness at once. And it's not like, because we do understand the, the lower dimensions also as we understand the higher, but it's just that because there is so much of that higher consciousness coming in, it will sort of destroy some of that uh, lower, uh, like the density, it will kind of destroy that density and release those distortions as well. Uh, and, and distortions, there are also distortions of these dimensions. We have to keep that in mind because there are beings that are trying to portray a certain image of these dimensions without really experiencing them or without really wanting to understand it. Like there is, there are just many false fifth dimension matrices out there where a lot of people, you know, mistake that for the real thing, unfortunately, is because they, they just want hope and they just kind of want a savior. That's where we have lost our way and we have given our power away. So please just remember that you have the power and ascension starts within. It's not some savior coming to, you know, take us all to another planet or take us all to the new earth uh, or take us all to the 5D, whatever. It's not like that. Ascension starts within. It, it starts from the core of your soul. And that's where also all of these higher dimensional activations start. And the way I see the dimensions themselves is that they are different perspectives. So it's just like you just have a different lens, right? You just, just switch your lens. You look at things from 5D, 6D, 7D, 8D, whatever. And, and to put this into, I guess, more practical terms, for example, my human higher self is more like a Pleiadian. Like it's almost like a Pleiadian human hybrid that I've got going on for my sort of fifth dimensional consciousness or fifth to sixth dimensional consciousness, I should say, because it's not like a harsh line of like, here's where dimension ends. Um, but the Pleiadian consciousness is very close to human and that's why they are very approachable. Very, uh, you know, just so, so calm and loving and I'm getting chills because Pleiadian uh, consciousness is also very close to me. It is, yeah, one of my star families of the purest light is uh, Pleiadian, one of them is Andromedan, and I also have a sort of like an avian <laughs> warrior team, uh, warriors of true, pure, divine light, uh, and that's, that's what we're doing as birds. <laughs> we just, yeah, it's, it's just fun. It's a lot of fun, fun for me. But yeah, the, say my human higher self might have more of that Pleiadian consciousness and then my other starseed layers, more 6, 7, 8, 90. But say, for example, if I wanted my sort of I am presence or my ascended master consciousness, I would go maybe around from like 70 and up. 70s is usually very much close to the ascended master consciousness as a embodied human. But it also, yeah, the ascended masters, to my understanding, also hang out in the oversoul level, so 8, 9, 10D. So it can be up to the 10 dimensional consciousness that uh, somebody with this ascended master presence has embodied in themselves. So just putting that out there, there is again no harsh line on where this starts or where it ends. But say if I for example did want to see things from the eyes of the Oversoul, I could see this from... like th this would most likely happen around 8 or 90 already. So if I wanted to see more of the 
oversold consciousness or if I wanted to see who other people might possibly belong to what oversold collectives that would happen around 8, 9, 10 dimension. When we think about, well, some, some angelic consciousness is around, I'd say 9 to 10D, something like that. So, uh, so when we think about that then, is if we wanted to see things from that angelic consciousness, especially archangelic consciousness, if we want to see things from like archangelic consciousness, it would be closer to that, you know, 10th dimension, because that's the kind of oversoul godhead level. And they are very close to like a god frequency. So somewhere around those lines, we would put the angelic lens, the tin D lens on and see, okay, here's what things look like, here's how things feel like from that pure divine archangelic consciousness. And, and that's just kind of how I would describe that. And, uh, and when we start to again embody these things, that's when things can feel a bit freaky, but those things do get activated, they do remain in our bodies. And sometimes we do need to do some work in order to make space for them. And that's where all of these physical clearing techniques, so some people might fast, some people might uh, have a different diet, some people might try an exercise routine, yoga, things like that. And especially when it comes to personally, this is what I've learned from um, my meetings um, with the social workers, there are two that I work with. But the thing about uh, trauma is that it's, an, it's not only gets trapped in the body, but it has to be released from the body. And so therefore, in order to reach that higher consciousness, it is important to work through those traumas and these very uh, old chat things in whichever way is the most uh, effective and comfortable for you, of course. But releasing that trauma is so important because I found that for myself, the longer that process uh, lasted, the longer that I had these things in my body and the longer that it took for my body to really process them and to release them, the, the more stuck I felt on my spiritual journey. It almost like was coming in the way. And so therefore, as soon as I started to, you know, see a therapist again, and I uh, went to, you know, see the social workers that started to really help me in this whole entire uh, process of clearing my vehicle from that trauma and clearing my vehicle from all of just the shit that I've been through over the last couple of years uh, and even more because trust me <laughs> there there have, has been that I, I have experienced um, as just a human and I need to make space for more positive experiences, and I am, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to receive those, of course. And as soon as you start to see that possibility for more than just okay experiences, when you start to get out of that survival mindset, when you become a person of a thrive and flourish mindset, you start to grow a lot faster and in ways that you know you you don't even imagine like well that well, like you haven't imagined before and I feel like a part of this emptiness that I've been feeling is a part of that it's just a part of allowing for not just the higher outcomes but allowing for myself to thrive in a completely new way and so therefore I can embrace that and it is a part of not just my spiritual process but just my process in life as a, as a human, as a divine human because we were always meant to be divine and I want you to remember that as well. That's why understanding dimensions in a different way can be really useful. Yeah, I want to kind of talk about this a little bit get this uh, thought at least started so that we can understand the dimensions in a new way so that we can get uh, a new perspective on this 
because a lot of this so far has just been uh, like there's very good content out there I'm not bashing it at all like there's a, a lot of good content about this uh, but then there's a, this almost very fundamentalist and uh, yeah religious I'm just gonna say it's fundamentalist and religious perspective on something that is not supposed to be distorted by those type of energy dynamics you know and that's uh, the main thing we are not meant to distort these things by energy dynamics that are of the old earth matrix let's anchor in those higher dimensions and just well higher dimensional experiences i should say let's anchor in that divine light pure crystalline consciousness and pure cosmic divine consciousness all of it and just flourish because that's what we're meant to do here <laughs> we're meant to flourish and everyone's allowed to flourish on this planet and the planet itself has a very high vibrational consciousness it to my understanding it has until uh, up to like 13 dimensions available for us 13 divine dimensions of consciousness available for us on this planet and uh, the sun has like 19 dimensions and this entire universe can be, this universe that we are in can go up to like 33 dimensions um, we're currently I think we're ha hanging around uh, to my understanding we are hanging around like 30 30 dimensions in this universe but it's potential to go up to 33 and that can happen like that that might be happening in like a, a, a much longer time so just uh just some perspective <laughs> but that's just some information that i got when i was working on my gateway um and um i still don't fully understand what that even means so uh maybe as i do more exploration into that topic i will share more but i don't know we'll see we'll see if it's even available uh if, if it's even uh, able to be on youtube but i just wanted to kind of say that because just us being on earth doesn't mean that uh, there isn't more multi-dimensional earth consciousness available for us because like the 5d earth is already there just go <laughs> And the 60 earth and all of that it, it's already there and i've actually been connecting more with the ninth dimensional earth uh, recently because this is what i've been called to you know connect to uh, and i feel like the especially with like the his seven eight nine dimensional energetics of this earth they are uh, a lot more available than they were before so i would definitely recommend people uh, kind of take some time and expand their perspective on this topic thank you for listening uh, maybe i'll get back to this topic at some point uh, love you all take care many snout kisses and stay inspired